Hello and welcome. So um, I just finished a book uh, this evening, uh, and I and I have some spicy thoughts on that particular book. But I think I'm going to uh, postpone my expression of those spicy opinions. Um, but it, so instead, I'm going to talk uh, about something nice, uh, a recent book that I. Finished a few days ago, which is "I Am China" by Xiao Lu Guo. So this book, uh, you know, uh, it's a wonderful book. I loved it, and it's it's also the third book by Xiao Lu Guo that I that I read. And so far, I must say that I like all of her books that I've read. I've read "The UFO in Her Eyes," um, and I particularly love, and I would say. Still, my most favorite by Xiao Lu Guo, and that would be a concise Chinese English dictionary for lovers. That book was awesome. Um, I would say "I Am China" is also awesome, and this is probably, well, not probably. It is. It is. It is my first five star book in 2022, and. Um, so yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a it's it's a historic moment. My first twenty, my first five star this year. Um, y you should be happy you're here. <laughs> anyway, um, now one thing that I really like to read in books is um, is uh, intersections of culture. And I think that um, it's fair to say that many books explore that concept, and uh, many books explore that concept really nicely, really well, very well written. Um, you know, it's a very general theme for you know that one can encounter in a book. And I feel that uh, you know, f first of all, that theme is definitely present in I Am China. So this book is not just about Chinese culture. But there are also cultures beyond uh, Chinese culture, as we will later see. But what I find uh, to be uh, special about this book is that the way that it handles and conveys that theme of, you know, intersections between different cultures. And so, yeah, before I talk more about that, uh, I Am China is actually... Uh, it's actually about this one particular character. Not exactly only about this particular character, but we start off the book with this one particular character named Iona. And Iona, she's actually a Scottish translator living in, uh, living in Britain. And one day she receives uh, some kind of like a package of uh, documents. And these documents are kind of like... Uh, uh, a bunch of letters and also uh, diaries written by uh, two Chinese uh, individuals. So um, the writers of these letters and diaries are uh, one of them is a Chinese man named Jian and another one is a Chinese woman named Mu and uh, Jian and Mu are actually lovers and they are very passionate in their romance. But that's not the only thing that they are really passionate in. The, they are also passionate in their political views, particularly Jian, um, earlier in his lives, uh, which Yona would eventually see in those, in those uh, you know, uh, bunch of diaries and uh, in letters. Because of them being so... Uh, so vocal in their political stance, in their political views, they end up, uh, you know, they end up separating from one another because of something unfavorable that happened to them in China. And uh, they are separated, but while they are separated, for a particular period of time, they are still able to uh, write letters to each other. But after that period of time, they really became separated, and uh, those those exchanges of communications and letters just sort of stopped. But still, uh, you know, the writings still exist in diary forms, and these are all documents that Iona receives from a publishing company, 
and uh, we will later see also how this publishing company ends up acquiring all of these uh, letters and uh, documents uh, and you know the diaries but for now it's it's you know uh, it's up to Iona to uncover what really happens to these people um, her main job is to translate all of these writings, but as she does that, she becomes even more engrossed with the backstory of Jen and Mu. And she is really invested, really emotionally invested in their lives and their thoughts and their romance. And as she approaches, you know, uh, the end of her translation work, Obviously, the story of Jen and Mu is not over. It sort of stops somewhere. But she knows, Iona knows that there is something more beyond that. And she becomes more proactive in finding out more about what really happens, uh, what really goes on between Jen and Mu. And unbeknownst to her, maybe these two people are not that far away at all from her so <laughs> the story sort of continues from there and I find it to be like this really interesting um, uh, it, it, it has this really interesting uh, structure in which you know the chapters are not necessarily just formed by regular prose but they are also uh, written in diary forms and also in letter forms as well and we get to see multiple voices just uh, you know it's it sort of alternates between the voices of Iona and also the voices of uh, Jen and also Mu so we see all three characters voices in this book just sort of giving their own personal uh, perspectives on on whatever that is going on at that time and it's just really wonderful because what I like so much is, you know, the fact that you'll see uh, perspectives on a particular thing from uh, someone who is actually from China and commenting on something that really happens to them in China versus a perspective of someone who literally, literally lives at the other side of the world you know, reading about what happens to these other Chinese characters that happens to them in China and processing it, not only reading it, but also processing it, translating it and forming thoughts of her own and becoming emotionally in invested in it. So I think that whole process is really interesting, it's so fascinating. And one thing that it highlights also is that the the act of translating in this book sort of plays an active role in conveying the story to us you know it's it's not like it, it doesn't portray translation you know Iona is a translator but it does not portray translation as something that is just really passive you know like uh, uh, changing one words from one language to another um, it, it it constantly shows us the this this kinds of struggle uh, or difficulty you know the, this tiny nuance that a translator would face in order to perfectly convey a story um, to an audience who only know a particular language who does not know the original language and this is sort of like a struggle that Yona herself is having because she being someone who is really emotionally invested with the, with the stories of these uh, characters from China she, she really wants to be able to portray or to convey their stories in a different language but hopefully while still carrying the same, the same intention or the same mood or uh, the same idea behind what these, uh, you know, what these character really feels, and to see her sort of going through the process of translating and seeing the kinds of obstacles that she is facing while doing this, it's really interesting, and it sort of got me thinking that, you know. The way that this novel includes this element of the act of translating, you know, 
on, on you know w we can certainly see that translation is sort of like a you know it's like an effort to bridge the gap between language differences you know an, an audience does not know a particular language so we need a translator in order to allow you know those audience to understand a particular work of particular writing you know so the translator acts like someone who builds that bridge someone who uh, sort of bridges the gap between you know those differences and and the job is not particularly a simple one as we see in uh, you know the kind of struggle that Iona has in you know trying to tell the story and when when you sort of extrapolate that idea you know how this book it talks about the efforts of a particular translator in telling a story y you can sort of extrapolate the idea that not only with just languages but also things like you know very general things like cultures different cultures there has always been like multi you know different kinds of attempts to bridge the gap between different cultures and you know, at first glance, it's so easy to say that, or you know, it's so easy to see that. You know, the cultures are different. You know, they have they have different nuances. They have different uh, different rules. <laughs> you know, they have, you know, all of these things that are just different. <laughs> that it makes it kind of difficult to see that certain parts overlap. But this book just sort of highlight that. There are things that can just overlap really easily, you know, people coming from different culture, but when they go and explore other cultures, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're leaving their culture, but rather, you know, they're just going from one, I would say, one state of existence to another. And it's totally possible for all of these states of existence to just coexist or combine with one another. And this is kind of like a, kind of like a, a, a point of discussion in this book as well. It happens a few times in this book, like how culture is not necessarily just something that is, uh, you know, uh, something that exists by itself. Um, there are parts in which uh, we are asked, sort of asked the question whether culture is something that is, that can be pure or whether culture is something that you can leave and people can call you traitor, traitor for your culture or not. And those instances happen in this book. And I don't know, I just find the whole thing really, tra you know, really fascinating. And with the addition of a, you know, of a translator character in this book, it sort of makes it even more fascinating that we get to see like a, kind of like a, um, a very tangible symbol of uh, of the act of bridging gaps between cultures. So I think it's really wonderful. Um, you know, just to give you a little bit more of a detail in this book, you know, the kinds of cultures that we are dealing here. We have cultures from China, definitely. Uh, we also have cultures from, you know, modern day uh British culture, uh, Yona being a Scottish herself, uh, you know, she, uh, she's of Scottish origin, so we have uh, her own personal culture as well. And then we also have, you know, this general uh, European culture happening in this book because one of the Chinese characters would eventually end up finding themselves in Europe. And uh, we will we will also encounter American culture in this book as well because one of the Chinese characters would find themselves in you know ending up in in America. So uh, we see all of the interactions between all of these different cultures and how they sort of just blend in with one another or sort of become sort of become missable in a way, but at the same time in other aspects are sort of immissible. It's it's really fun to see. It's really, I don't know. It's it's in a way it's kind of inspiring also, but overall I just like the way how all of these elements, including the form of this novel, uh, just works together in order to convey this particular story. And um, 
yeah, the, I would say all of the Xiao Lu Guo books that I've read so far, they play a lot with the form. <laughs> and I like that very much uh, because, for one thing, it makes her books far from boring. Like, even the writing itself is just so playful and when you read it, you feel like you're having a lot of fun. And, um, and although her books tend to talk about, you know, cultures and culture differences, you don't feel that her books are really, uh, are, are really heavy handed or are very preachy. You don't find, you don't, you don't feel that vibe in her books. You don't feel that her books are really pedantic. Uh, it all just comes very naturally and often her characters they, even though they can be quite politically driven, uh, but often the characters also occupy themselves with things personal, really, really personal things that many people would probably consider to be frivolous, which, you know, honestly, I always love characters who, while they have some kind of leaning towards, you know, the so-called, uh, more important things. <laughs> I also like characters who uh, who are grounded in frivolousness, frivolity, you know, things that we consider as petty or just, you know, unimportant, so to speak. Things that are really personal in a way. So, um, I guess that's why I really like uh, I Am China and Xiao Lu Guo's book. Uh, in general. I still have one other book by her that I've not yet read and I think it's called 20 Fragments of a Ravenous Youth. Really long title. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, I guess those are all my thoughts. My most salient thoughts <laughs> on I Am China so far. Um, let me know if you have read this book. Uh, what did you think about it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? You know, or uh, if you are interested in reading this book, I definitely recommend uh, this book if you want to start reading something by Xiao Lu Guo. I feel that this book is really uh, accessible, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. I'll see you again in a different video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching, and bye bye.